Profanity Nation. Profanity Nation. Profanity Nation. Yeah, it's the new era of man for some old school fans with a new school brand. We got money on the mic with the plan in hand. And Stat Pat to his left, they go hand in hand. And to the right, we got Simpster, he putting it down. It's the Profanity Nation, we running the town. Yeah. It's the Profanity Nation. Profanity Nation. Hey, welcome to the show. Welcome to the Profanity Nation podcast, where we are the voice of the professional fan. Ooh, good show today, guys. Uh, I'm excited. Let, I'm let, excited. Let's get to it. First of all, Money Mike, how are you? Man, you know, I'm doing good, man. Hey, big shout out to Black Pearl Elite. Uh, you know, they, they lost a, a hard one at the Drew League. The finals. Um, we're, we're told that if the, you know, after the NBA championship, the Drew League championship is... Second. And that's the second in line. So <laughs> I'll let hard them tell loss. Us. Yeah. I'll but, let them tell that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Big, big shout out to Black Pearl. But, you know, y'all going to be back next year, man. Absolutely. Great, great run. Step out. How you feeling? I'm feeling great now. I'm in studio. I had to get away from the wife and kids. So uh, <laughs> you get I, some free time. I am, got some free you time. Get to hang right out with now. some friends. It's only for the show. And then, you know, I'm going to, the ankle brace gets hot. I got to go right back <laughs> it starts home. It's beeping, you know? right? Yep. It's limited. Yeah. Well, we have an amazing guest on the show tonight. You all know him. He's an icon. He's absolutely outstanding. We we have Peter Vesey joining us. He is just waiting backstage right now to join us. But as always, as you know, we start the show with our guy, Marco Nunez. Let's get Marco Nunez hey, in here. Hey, Marco. Hey, Marco. How you doing? What's going on, gentlemen? How's everybody doing today? Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, man. We missed you, man. Been a minute, it's right? Been a little yeah. bit. You're on summer vacation. Yeah, we went uh, took a little vacation. Uh, finally got to go to Hawaii after two, three years with this whole COVID thing. They finally opened up the islands, and we had the opportunity to finally kind of go there type of thing. Nice. And then uh, kind of busy with traveling and working. So I've been a little MIA for about two, three weeks. That's uh, okay. No, it's it's, all it's good, football man. preseason, of course. Uh, yeah. Money Mike, you have a question, please. Yeah. Hey, so I wanted to ask you, man, you know, this guy LeBron. This guy, Tatum, he says. Was out there, you know, <laughs> Jamal Crawford's league, uh, and then they – they they stopped the game in the second quarter because of condensation on the court. Now this is like a regular gym, so I first of all I don't even know how condensation comes on the court, <laughs> you know. But how dangerous is that for like any player, especially we'll call him an elite player. Man, man come LeBron. on, LeBron. Yeah, you no, know, I would know. How about Tatum, an elite player. Like yeah, Tatum, Tatum was okay. there. Yeah, yeah, Chet, Chet, Chet Tatum was there. The rookie Chet. Yeah, Chet. Yeah. Go ahead, Marco. Sorry. So so condensation on the court, uh, you know. Tell us a little bit about that, please. So co condensation is basically when there's either like a, a thin layer of liquid or water that kind of develops on the floor or, or either, you know, when someone spills something on the floor type of thing. Now, it's it's kind of weird to kind of hear that, at, at, you know, at, at, on this court type of thing. One of the most common places we do see that in the NBA is whenever we travel to an NBA city that has a hockey team there because what they do is they put the court on top of the ice. Obviously, they put a layer like between the ice and then they put the court. And there's been some games where you walk on the court and there's the condensation, either the, the, the ice underneath is either too hot in the room and the, the arena that, that kind of starts melting and kind of seeps through it. And then you start getting a little bit of liquid on the floor. Obviously, any type of liquid makes the floor very slippery. If the floor becomes slippery, a player basically starts to stop on a dime and pivot and turn. They can lose their footing and they can, they can easily pull a hamstring, pull a groin, roll an ankle, worst case scenario, tear an ACL type of thing. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so how do they realize that? Like after the game starts, though, because it's, <laughs> yeah, right. Didn't they know I, that you know, before? I, I'm just thinking logically. Like, look, y'all didn't know this. Like 30 minutes before the game warm -ups. starts, that yeah, warm ups that yeah. there may be an issue. Why are we stopping the game in the second quarter? Correct. I mean, you may not know the answer. I'm just, I mean, yeah, I'm just thinking logically. Yeah, Probably an overpacked like, gym. I mean, sweaty in there. Cause my question is, like, did they know this? And then they said, well, we got to give them something, and and just we gonna get one quarter. Can. And then they just stopped it because they thought it was too dangerous. I'm yeah, just and, and, and maybe that this is something that needs to start regulating, especially in the Drew, like I just mentioned. You know, there's a lot of pro athletes starting to go there. In the NBA, the refs go out on the court um, and they check the flooring, you know, make sure there's no condensation. Two, they make sure they, they got to make sure that the, the, the flooring themselves, you know, when, when they put the, the, the floor together, it's like a puzzle and they got to make sure that it connects correctly. If there's a gap. I remember there was one uh, court that we went to that there was a nice, like almost like a good four inch gap between these two pieces. Oh, so that we couldn't start the game. They had, a, you know, the, the crew had to come in, they had to take half of the court off and then kind of reconnect it again type of thing. So the rest job is to go out there. There's an NBA official that does that. I, myself, as the athletic trainer and the other team, where we would walk the floor to make sure there's any condensation, there's any cracks, anything like that as far as before we start the game. And then finally, at the end of the day, the players give you a little bit of feedback. You know, they'll tell the ref, hey, you know, there's a slippery floor over here. They have people, you know, in the NBA, they have uh, 
uh, court attendants with mops as you see them that they go out there and they kind of mop it. Maybe yep, now that yeah. the professional athletes are going to the Drew League or they have been going to Drew League, that's something they may start make want to kind of regulate having some, you know, some ball attendants, court attendants to be able to mop the floor. Because what happens is also is that if you keep in mind is that when you're in a free throw line, most of the athletes are leaning over. They're sweating. Right. Some of that sweat can come down. So if you notice an NBA game, as soon as the free throw uh, play go, it concludes and they go to this other court, the ball attendant kids on the court, their job is to make sure they sweep that free throw line borderline every single time. That is always mandatory. So the condensation could be probably came from the sweat from the athletes. Perfect. Now uh, I have a question for you yeah. as the head athletic trainer for a professional team. Are, are, are you guys just, Oh, cringing when, when your players go to these pro-am games um, or is this something you're like, Oh no, it's a good tune up. It keeps them in shape. Um, it, it depends. Like, like I said, the Drew League, I think it's been around for several years that you do. It's become more of a professional league type of thing. You do get a little cringing when you have like um, athletes that have their basketball camps. And then sometimes, you know, there's a kid or somebody, Hey, you know, I think I could take, take, take you on and they play one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Um, those are the times where we're like, okay, you know, we have this young kid or this, this athlete, right. you know, that wants to try to prove himself to, to the, with this pro athlete. But at the Drew League, I think the Drew League's been around for so many years already that it's become a professional league that it's, it's kind of like, okay, there's an understanding. And I think that's the other reason why maybe they should start kind of, I don't want to say regulate, but actually having balls, ball and then swap and stuff like that. Because you're, if you're going to have all these professionals, because God forbid anything happens in, in the Drew League and they may become, you know what, maybe we don't want to go to the Drew League anymore. Right. You don't want to, I'm sure the Drew League doesn't want to get to that point. Mm -hmm. uh, what, we have to go really quick, but I do have one more question. You may not know this one. Um, is it possible to put in the contract that the players cannot participate in the Drew League? Is that something that, that the athletic trainer could demand or request? Not the athletic trainer, but the team can demand it. Because like, as far as most contracts with professional athletes, there are certain restrictions that athletes cannot do. They can't ride motorcycles. They cannot ride sea dues. They cannot go uh, skydiving. There's certain activ activities that athletes are, are prohibited from doing while they're under contract. And if they do do it, um, you know, if we go back, and I don't want to throw anybody on the bus several years Vladimir ago. Vladimir Romanovich. Vladimir Romanovich. Yeah. Okay, all right. So you tell us that when he went sporting. That was kind of restricted from his contract, and he decided to do it. The Lakers found out, and they had to actually had to find I mean, technically, they could have voided this whole entire contract. Yeah, but I think yeah. Lakers are a good, awesome good organization. That. Yeah, they, they could have just voided his whole contract, and he wouldn't have got paid. But I think they just fined him, I think, like half a million dollars or something like that, because he ended up with an AC, AC, AC sprain up here in the shoulder. So, yep. yeah, there's certain things. So, I don't know. Like I say, it may get to the point where an athlete can have like a season any injury in the Drew League, and then it may get to that point. But obviously, the Drew League, they don't want to get that. So they got they should take some of the precautions to make sure they don't get there. You're nice. awesome. Marco, cool. thank you so much for joining us. Welcome thank back. Thank you. Welcome we'll have back. you again next oh, week. Please let everybody yeah, know. We're going to get to this NFL real quick. <laughs> hey, yeah, fantasy, man. Fantasy. This, this week. fantasy and so forth. So, But please fantasy. let everybody know how the uh, best way to keep up to date with what you've got going on, Marco. Mike, let's talk before you do your draft. Um, hey, hey uh, if, if, you, <laughs> if you will follow me on Instagram at Marco Nunez 17 or please subscribe to my YouTube channel at Evolve Athletic Performance. Thank you, Marco. We'll see you next week. We appreciate it. Thank I'm you, Marco. All right. Great info as always, guys. Okay. So we're Woo! super excited. Yeah, now we're, we're ready. Excited. Okay. So let's introduce them, of course. Okay. So we have the amazing, the iconic, the historic, yeah, uh, the uh, regularly quoted, the nickname uh, uh, inventor. Yes. We have the great Peter Vesey with us. Let's bring him on right man. now because yes, we're man. super excited. Yes, man. For Hello, sure, Peter. How let's are you doing it. tonight? Good, good. I got my ankles taped. I'm ready. You're ready. <laughs> let's go. Right. Yeah, let's let's go. go. Let's do Thank it. Thank you for joining us. I know it's late. You're on the East Coast, so this really means a lot to oh, us. We've, we've been looking forward to this quite a bit. So, so thank you and thank you again. Um, let's I, go I, I, I would have liked to have asked your trainer though. I said, you know, we didn't have that trouble in the rucker when we played on blacktop. No hey. uh, condensation. <laughs> what, what is that? Is that like an L.A. thing? Kind of uh, no, yeah, see, okay. I knew it was coming. Okay. I knew it was Seattle. I knew it was coming, I think that, that Pro-Am game was, I think, in Seattle. Yeah, yeah it was Seattle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the condensation uh, is... Uh, condensation is, uh, near my bathtub, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> On the mirror or something, let me tell you. Um, <laughs> go ahead, Pat. Please start. No, so, um, Mr., uh, I always call you... I want to say Mr. Vessi, because I respect... No, call you, me Peter. But, but I'm call you, I'll call you Pete, but... Peter. So, Peter. 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 All the top. All the top. I want to ask you. So you're from Queens. I'm. I'm assuming you grew up Knicks fan. So 
and you cover it. I mean, when I think about the NBA on NBC, it's all of the games, and then it's you. Like, you're like the pre woge You're like pre-all that. You were always breaking stories. It was like you were the guy. So, but I like the fact that you were kind of like still a little abrasive. Like, you didn't give them any. Like, you didn't give them anything. Edgy. If they were, if they were, if they were messing up, I want to say effing up, but if they were messing up, you kind of like called them out on it. So, I like the fact that you were sitting there and being able to have the stones to be able to call out these players when they were messing up. And we don't get that now. We get a lot of coddling of these athletes right now. So how do you feel now being who you were and being in your profession and seeing other people do your job now, see how they are basically just not giving the hard, the soft, the hard, hard questions. The thing that we, as we being the, Call the real fans warning. Pat, I only got an hour. I only got 45 minutes, man. Your, your, question, your question is longer than Bob Costas's question. My man, my man, I'm trying. I'm trying hard. Ask me the question. Ask me the question. I will ask you this. How does it feel looking at these guys uh, basically coddle these athletes nowadays? Well, I, you know, I don't know whether they coddle them or not, Pat. I don't I don't pay that much attention to uh, to what's going on, you know, with – with uh, day-to-day stuff, uh, I don't even I don't even uh, have the league pass anymore. Um, you know, I watch the playoffs. Uh, I read a lot. Do they coddle them? You know, I, I don't I don't know. You know, I could call out guys for for that. You know, you, I hate when people compare me to Woj because 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 you know he breaks stories that uh, that agents and executives of teams want him to break. Period. I broke stories that nobody wanted to be broken. No, they never wanted them to be broken. So I, I, I hate that, you know, comparing me to him. He did, you know, when I, when I was basically at the end of my career, he, he, he came up to me one day and told me that, so, you know, you and I are the only ones that know what's going on in this league. Yikes. Really? And I said, and who are you? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> no, I mean, really like what, what, freaking nerve he's got but whatever you know he makes he's making a bundle he's on television he's terrible but he's bad, though. You know, he doesn't you know whatever you know but him you know I, I could come down on him but the other guys look I read a lot of stuff that I like coddling the guys uh you know I know I'm told by I, I know I'm told by people that do cover the league uh, like Mark Stein you know guys that I mentored when they first started that the only way to deal with with the league today is you've got to make friends with the agents. And uh, now not that that was any different than when I, when I was around, except, uh, you know, I would bust an agent, whether he was a source or not guys like Woj, they are not going to do that. They protect them. And for that, they get information. And so I, I definitely resent that part of it. Uh, and they're all, all those top guys are part of it. You can read it. You can see the way they, they, uh, they, they, announce things uh, or pronounce things, whatever, break things. But um, yeah, so I, I do, I absolutely, you know, read, read stuff uh, that I like, um, for, you know, different newspapers online. You know, I, I subscribe to the Times and Boston Globe and um, I, I subscribe to Mark Stein's uh, on, on Subtract. But, you know, so um, I don't know if I answered your question or not. Oh, you, you, know, you, you, you did great. You really did. <laughs> you did great. <laughs> let, let me say this: like you know, I've like as I've, I've followed you, I've seen you ask these questions that I feel like like one one in particular when right after the Bulls won the championship, you was asking Carl Malone like, "Do you think you could have played better?" You know, <laughs> you know. I don't know if you, you remember. No. Well, let me let me interrupt you there. So okay. I don't. Uh, meanwhile, I've lost I've lost you on here for some reason. Um, you can still see me. Yeah, we're still. Yeah, on. We, we, still got you. we got you. Yeah. I'm not sure why I lost you, but um, let me see if I can get you back. No problem. We can see you. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear it. So you can oh, see me. It doesn't matter if I see yeah, you. So, so um, that that interview with uh, Carl Malone. Everybody wants to make it way, way more <laughs> than it was. I was interviewing the guy. I was interviewing the guy after a game and uh, asking him. You know, I don't think they were particularly hard questions. He didn't take it that way. If you look at him, he's right. not saying, man, like uh, people today, oh, he's trying to get punched by Carl Malone. Carl Malone, you can see his reaction. It wasn't It wasn't bad. Yeah. He, look, I, I interviewed him many, many times before. So he was always a good interview, and he would always answer the questions. He would always answer them. 
Um, so he answered those questions. And, you know, nobody said a word about it for about 20 years. <laughs> and, then, and then suddenly, you know, some dope on, on, uh, on the line <laughs> said, oh, look what Bessie's trying to do. And I, I, saw, I saw him at a, uh, an all-star game. I think it was in New Orleans, probably was. And I said to him, hey, you know, they're trying to make this into a big deal. I said, uh, did you take it that way? He said, no, no, I didn't. And uh, I said, you know, you and I should do a, uh, a podcast together. And he said, well, you know where to find me. And well, uh, well, well, we're going to send out that invitation now. So <laughs> get you guys together. Yeah, that's but, for sure. Yeah, but see, my, my point with that was you asked like the real questions, like the, the stuff, the stuff that we want to know. People really like want to know, you know, in, in that moment. So I didn't take it like, like you were that was trying so to controversial, get right? them yeah. controversial, but you know these are really honest questions that that I think like people want to know, and and I I love that when you go and you would break a story, you wouldn't call into you know an agent or trying to get in good with them so nah. they could give you more information. Fall. Nothing was spoon you know, fed, <laughs> right? They, I love that you you know you found this out and you probably broke a whole lot of stuff that people did not want to be broken, you know. Well, you yeah. know? There's no, there's no question about that. And, and, uh, you know, in, in the process of doing that over the years, I, I lost, I lost a lot of good friends temporarily or, or made enemies temporarily. Um, mm -hmm. for the most part, uh, the people who were angry at me during my career, who, who wanted to fight me, um, you know, I would say only, only two or three of them would probably still want to fight me today. The rest of them yeah. are my good friends. Mm -hmm. And and so you know things things they they understand they, you know, most of the guys understand that, that I was doing my job and that I wouldn't I wouldn't hesitate to go after the number one guy on the team or the head coach as a you know just just as I would go after the twelfth man on a team or or an assistant or the general manager whatever I you know I I I didn't play any favorites and um, you know so you know even even guys like you know Julius Irving who. You know, it was the best man at my wedding. Absolutely. And, uh, yes. I, I, um, I, I went after him when, when he held out from the nets. I, I thought, I thought he was definitely doing, doing, doing them dirty, and because uh, there was nothing in writing. And uh, you know, I, I did a podcast with him. My first one that I did for the Retired Players Association was with him, and he, he brought it up on the air. He said, I, I was kind of surprised. He said he kind of regrets doing what he did. He, he kind of wishes he had stayed with the Nets. Yeah, and don't and don't we all? You know that would have been that would have <laughs> been a great, great team that they would have brought into the NBA because they had just yeah. got tiny Archibald, and uh, you know would have would have been exciting as anything. Um, anyway, absolutely. Now that that actually segues perfect to to my question. Uh, well, I know you're not uh, watching every game day to day anymore, just because you don't have to do that. So you're watching big games, playoffs, and so forth, but you're keeping up to date. The the Kevin Durant situations, the Kyrie situations, yeah. um, really the state of the NBA these days, it's changed so much since when you first started in the show and watching the, the game grow. What's your assessment of the game today and the power that these players have? Well, I, you know, certainly... I'm, I'm like everybody else. I, I, I don't like it at all that, uh, you know, a guy like Kevin Durant, who just signed a, a four year contract the year before, is now demanding that the coach and the general manager need to be fired or else he wants to be traded. Uh, I will say that they, he's probably right that they do deserve to be That's fired. True. But but uh, I don't I don't like it. I, I don't know Kevin at all, really. I've only talked to him once in my life, and that was at the end of his Warriors career, I saw him out in Phoenix and we talked for a while, but I don't know him, but I've always liked him. I love, obviously you like his game. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I definitely don't, don't like what's going on. The power, the power has definitely shifted. I don't mind the power shifting. You know, a lot of people took exception to LeBron, Wade and Bosch getting together uh, in Miami. I did not. I, I felt that uh, the idea is to win. And if you're a free agent, you know, that's what it's all about. Go where you want. And um, so so I wrote it like that at the time and still feel that way. But when you're under contract and and these guys are holding up, it used to be they'd hold out. Yep. And now they hold up teams. 
you know, and, and how many, you know, Davis, Davis with the, you know, with, with New Orleans and, yep. uh, yeah. you know, and, and on and on, you know, and Harden yep. did it with the Nets last year. Yep. No, man, I don't, I don't like that at all. I don't know what the league can do about it. The perception is, is really warped uh, from the fans point of view, the media's, they have to do something. They have to try to do something, but they have to do it in conjunction with the union. Um, they, they have a big say in it. Yep. And I really don't know what they can do. Um, this is going to be, a, you know, a guy with three years on his contract is a test case. Personally, I say, you know, you stay where you are and, uh, and that's it. We're not even going to talk about it anymore. You know, either show up or don't show up. Exactly. That, that, that's my thought with the Nets. If I was uh, in there, I'd be like, okay, then you're not playing for the next three years. I guess you're retiring. Kyrie, Kyrie's got one year, the same thing. Yeah. You know, he keeps saying the right thing is like, he wants to, you know, pro publicly says he wants to play for the Nets, but I, you know, I'm, I'm told he absolutely would like to play for the Lakers and, but the Lakers aren't going to, the, the Nets aren't going to take back Westbrook for him, right. even though they're on the same contract, same expiration date. They're not, they're not going to do that. Um, you yeah, know, I mean, it takes a it takes a, a ballsy owner to to really uh, come that clamp down on the whole thing. And the Nets owner did not do that with with Kyrie last year. You know, he wouldn't take the vaccination. He told him he wasn't going to get paid. He wasn't going to get uh, he wasn't going to be able to play. And then halfway through the year or somewhere around there, he decided to do it the other way. He said he could play on the road. And I know. You know, again, I don't know too much, but I know for a fact the league was not happy with that. Not yeah. happy at all. I mean, you made a decision, stick by it. So yeah. this this owner is wavering, you know. Well, you know, what what does he know? He's listening, he's listening to a general manager who I think stinks. And I think <laughs> Durant Durant is absolutely right. They never ever should have gotten hardened. They didn't need him. Nope, and they nope. gave up how many great players for him, you know. Allen and Cleveland. I mean, come on. I mean, what? Yeah, right. That totally screwed it up. But I will say, you know, and I emphasize and I under, underline it. It could have been the owner saying it, not the general manager. You, you just don't know mm -hmm. unless you're in that room. For instance, everybody to this day, and I'm sure you guys are among them, uh, blames Billy King for the Garnett Pierce giving up draft picks and all that stuff. And you know, they 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 said it was Billy King, the general manager, who did it. When it was not Billy King who did it, it was the Russian owner who did it. Yeah. Uh, he demanded he do it. And Billy took the fall and he's never said anything differently. But I know it wasn't him. He didn't want to do it, give up all those picks. But the owner wanted to win immediately. Probably yeah. knew he was gonna, you know, sell a team it's quickly. And so Billy's out of a job, you know, with the NBA. He'll never get another GM job. And it, you know, again, I think the owner took care of him for a year or two. Um, he should have taken care of him for life. He's the biggest. Yeah, that's right. He cost him right. his career. Cost yeah, he did. Career. He did. So I, you know, I say, I say, the Nets GM now is responsible, but I don't know that for a fact. Yeah, I look me, like me. I agree with you, uh, Peter. Like, but like my whole thing about, say, for example, Ke uh, Kevin Durant says he wants to go to Boston. Okay, cool. I'm gonna see you to Boston. But well, we don't know that. We don't know that. We, well, we well, read that. That's an ex example. That, that, that's what this report is. My whole thing, though, is if I send you to Boston, I need to take I need to take four of their stars back. Wait, why am I at least take them? In the why? Crowd. Yeah. Why am I trying to put you on a team that's going to Sex. possibly immediately make you to the finals? I need to get something back for this forty million dollars that you know we're getting. It's like, kind of so. like when the when the Lakers traded Shaq, right? right? Yeah. And we didn't the Miami. Get, we didn't get Dwayne Wade back in any trade. I mean, if you did that trade right now, we're fleecing. Yeah. yeah. Miami Heat for, well, for sure. look, yeah. look, the Nets in Boston is deja vu all over again. You're going to make the same mistake he's made before. Yep. Like, wait, right. exactly. yeah. One right. team I'm not exactly. dealing with is Boston. You know, in the old days, you only dealt something like this in, in, in another conference. Send them to another conference. Yeah. You're not, you're not going to be in the same division with the team exactly. with Durant. <laughs> that was the rule. You'd send them away so that you would only see them again in the finals. Only. That yeah. ever you know, you only. see them twice. You see them twice during the year. Yeah, exactly. that's it. Exactly. So, nah, I, I wouldn't do any. But again, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't call around and ask what's going on. Is Boston really live? I don't. I, I have no idea. Every day, every day, you read something about 
news flash, news flash, and a guy. It's it, it's not a news flash. It, it's a writer making up something. You know, he, well, this is the trade that I think would work, and it's like a news flash. Yeah, yeah, yeah they the tried. Hell? Right. <laughs> you, you look at it; it looks like it's breaking news, and like the yeah, trade. Yeah, it's not. It's nothing. It's like, I mean, I'd be embarrassed if I were these people. You know. Yeah, yeah. and so I want. Oh, sorry, sorry, ahead, I'm sorry, money. I, I want to ask you a question because. Obviously, when you were reporting on these stories, we were not in this 24-hour news cycle. And so now that we are, people are just trying to break stories just to, be, just to get their name out there. And I think they're being, being a little disingenuous with just us as the, the fans and, and us being the, the just wanting to see the game. But we want to get the inside scoop, but we don't want – people be fabricating stories. And I think so every fresh. day there's always some fictitious, you know, some fake Yeah, fictitious. Yeah, fictitious. Yeah, that's, that's not, like, we know it's not going to happen, yeah. but it's going to get likes. It's going to get know, some reads. It's going to get some reads and, and we're going to get some clicks. And we're now at that age where it's, it's you know, it's that. And I, and I think it's, it's really bad for the game that we're now just is the entertainment versus just the game being the entertainment. We're trying to we're trying to emulate the NFL where we have to have something on a news cycle every day, every month. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, I'm I'm glad that I'm not writing anymore because in in my time, uh the NBA would end after the free agent, you know, like the first two weeks of July, it was over. And and then you could take the summer off. I was like a school teacher for 20 years. I would just take the rest of the summer off and I'll see you in training camp. Mm-hmm. Now it oh. just goes on and on and on. Uh, it would have really ruined my vacation. So uh, I'm glad I don't have it. But I, I, you know, I hear you about the clicks and all that. It's like you, if you're if you're really a smart fan, if you're really smart. You follow people that, you know, over time you learn that these guys actually do have sources. You know, they might not come through for, you know, a week or two, whatever. Um, but but then something happens. Or you've got confidence in that writer that he actually knew what was being talked about. Didn't mean that it didn't, ha- it wasn't, didn't happen, that he was wrong. And I used to do that a lot in the beginning when I first wrote. I had, I had an editor when I worked for the New York Daily News, that, you know, I, I'd be saying stuff was going on and he'd be keeping track of what happened after what I what I wrote. And so, you know, I, I obviously hated that, you know, son of a bitch. But, you know, it was like he didn't, he didn't get it. He didn't get it at all. But, um, you know, at the Post, the Post was a, a little different. The fans, you had to break in the fans on, hey, I, I know what's going on, man. I know. So... Then they, and they found out, you know, did did everything happen that I said? I never, I never, I think maybe only once or twice, maybe twice in my career, I said something was going to happen, and it didn't, or something happened and it didn't twice. That's great. The other stuff, the other Not stuff, bad. I had it either either exactly right or I was speculating. It was like I call it uh, educated speculation because I I had great context. And um, so people who read me continually, they, they got to know that what I was talking about is, is, is the truth. Um, yeah, I do. I do. You know, you talk about today and everybody wants to be first. They don't care if they're right, right. but they want to be first. Mm-hmm. Um, I would I would I would enjoy competing with them in this in this market the way it's done. And I and I've said this on other programs. I honestly believe without a doubt that I could do it in the newspaper and wouldn't have to do it on Twitter. I would have it in That's beautiful. in the paper before mm-hmm. they had it on Twitter. And the, and, and the way I, the reason I say that without, you know, with all, with all due modesty or immodest, all due immodesty, <laughs> of course, is because when I was, I, after I retired from the post, I wrote for Patreon, maybe, maybe two years or something. And, mm-hmm. uh, and, and so I broke, Several stories on Patreon, not on Twitter, Patreon, and they came true. And, you know, you're in L.A., so you you know you could look it up. So one of them was, the biggest one was, I guarantee okay. that LeBron James was going to be a Laker 10 months before he became a Laker. Guaranteed it. 
And, and, you know, everybody just shrugged it off. And then when it happened, nobody gave me credit. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people tried to take credit for it. Of course. Um, and then the other one was the Lakers tampering with Paul George. I had that. And, uh, you know, they got fined $500,000, as it turned out. <laughs> they should have been, they should have been, uh, they should have had a, a number one pick taken from them. But I, again, I remember doing a Laker, the Lakers station out there, radio station out there, and the, some, some jerk off who was interviewing me was saying, oh, you, you're doing, you're, you're saying that about tampering because you're not a Magic Johnson fan. And I said, does that make any sense at all? I mean, uh, no. and then, and then of course, when it happened, I didn't hear from them, but yeah, of course. anyway, so, so I, I would, I would like to, I mean, I know stuff now, which I'm not going to, I'm not going to reveal it here, but I know stuff now that, uh, I could, I could break tomorrow and, uh, right. not on Twitter, but you know, right. that's of course, uh, well, you know, Peter, what we're going to do, sorry, Mike, we're going to take a quick break. We just have to, to run a couple of our sponsors uh, just for one minute, and then we're going to come back with the great Peter Vesey. This is the Profanity Nation podcast. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Coming right back. United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services. wellness center hey we're back thank you for joining us we are the profanity nation podcast and we have our amazing guest peter vesey with us today Be great. and uh peter what i'd like to do is i'm just gonna uh say a couple players names you just say right off the top of your head kind of what you think and and so forth okay all uh, right let's start with james harden <laughs> <laughs> you say what? Yeah, no, what? James Harden. I wonder why you picked him. Um, <laughs> not not a fan. I had a I had a, my uh, I voted for the top seventy five. I had a vote. Did not vote for him. I I, I you. you know he's an official scorer who seemed to you know come up short big time every big game in his career. Uh, was not easy to play with. Was you talk about? writers coddling players i mean his general manager now with philly coddled him in houston you know allowed him to get away with ridiculous stuff for just unbelievable stuff <laughs> the nets the nets went and got him for god knows what reason uh i know you know you read stuff about oh you know he was tired of Kyrie, and that's why he wanted out no 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 he had a deal with that you know with the gm maury um, and he, he knew he could go to, go to, uh, to, oh, yeah. to, to Philadelphia. And, and so he screwed the nets, you know, he screwed them in the trade, you know, they never should have given up as much. And then he, you know, it wasn't about Kyrie at all. I remember Durant, you know, I heard, heard Durant was really angry at him because he was out all night, not all night. He was out partying, you know, going to the strip clubs. He never got, he, he's never gotten over that habit. And so he was angry at him. You know, he had that supposedly a bad hamstring. Yeah. Right. You know, it didn't stop him from going out and partying. So not, <laughs> not, a, not a fan. Not a fan. Perfect. Uh, uh, Steph Curry. I love Steph Curry. You know, here we go the opposite. Now, you know, we're going to go 180 degrees uh, the other way. Um, 
You know, I, I covered his dad, and so I knew I knew the son was going to be a class act, as his brother is a class act. Um, the, the kid has done nothing wrong his whole life, I don't think, and and uh, a pleasure pleasure to watch play. You know, there aren't too many players today that I would actually pay, you know, to watch, but he's one of them. And, um, you know, I, I Mark Jackson, when he coached him, you know, we all know what he said about about him and Clay being the best shooting backcourt ever, and everybody, you know, dogged dogged Mark for it. And now I, I don't think there's any doubt about it. Uh, there isn't any doubt about it. So I I, I just love him. I mean, uh, he doesn't get enough credit for being a great passer. Doesn't get enough credit for having you know great handle, uh, great teammate. Yeah. Um, Peter, let me ask you a question because I like Steph too, um, but we're now getting into the territory where. We're always comparing generations. Don't ask, ask me. Don't ask me. Don't ask me to do it. Okay. No, and I, I won't ask you to do that. Well, I will ask you, how do you feel about the fact that we now are into, at the stage where Steph Curry is better than Magic Johnson? Well, I, you know, again, you, who said that? You know, I don't know who said that. I, I mean, is this? Uh, I, I look, again, I, I don't know how you can compare general. It's ridiculous. You know, you can compare. You can compare Russell and Chamberlain because they played against each other, you know, but you, you can compare even Kobe and, and Jordan to some extent because they played against each other. But no, I mean, magic, magic is, you know, top, top five, top 10 all time, you know, no, no question. You know, Curry, Curry is right there. Uh, who was it the other day said that, that, oh, Rick Barry said on my podcast that if he had to pick five players, you know, beat anybody, and, and he's going to be on that team. He would pick the three centers. You know, the, the Russell, Kareem, and and Wilt, mm -hmm. and and uh, he picked Magic, and and but if they're going to play a three point three point range, you know, they're going to play a three pointer. He would have Curry instead of Magic. So I thought I thought that was an interesting way of putting it. Okay. And um, look, how about greatness is greatness? Absolutely. <laughs> And there you go. I mean, it's it's so stupid to try to compare and argue yeah. about it. Please, yeah. no. Uh, let's go with Russell Westbrook. You know, Russell Russell Westbrook again. I don't I don't watch enough games to understand why why he he struggled last year. We know he's not a great shooter from three point range. Why he continues to take them, <laughs> I don't know. Um, every nobody had a problem with him when he was averaging triple doubles. Um, you know, and tiny, tiny, no, no, Oscar was the only one that did it before that. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't know. I've seen, seen stuff. You, you probably know more than I do about this. You know, his coach didn't, 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 didn't give him a role, didn't play him enough, didn't do this, didn't do that. Um, I, I don't know. You know, I, again, if I was covering, I'd sure, I'd sure want to hear what LeBron had to say about him, mm -hmm. um, you know, on the record. I don't want to hear off the record. And then, that stuff, that stuff's no good, you know, but he's the only one that I would care about what, what he really thinks about, him. you know, can he, can he fit in? Does, does Westbrook want to fit in? I, I've never spoken to Westbrook in my life. I, I feel bad that I never got to do that, but I retired right as he came into his own. Sure. And um, so I, I don't know. I, I, um, I mean, the guy, great player. I mean, great player, diverse, you know, plays hard. I, I, I did a, I went out to dinner uh, at the end of my career with Kobe and uh, and Kobe told me that Westbrook was uh, he, he named named him as, as his favorite player at that time. He, he absolutely loved him. So things like that. I, I listen to players when they talk about other players. That's why I would love to know what LeBron really thinks about him. Kobe wasn't bullshitting me when we went out to dinner and I don't have a tape recorder or a pen, oh, right. you know? So he, he loved his intensity, loved it and loved his, his, his versatility. And so I'm going to, I'm going to stick with that. Yeah. That's a good one. Money. You, you know, you know, Peter, I, I, one thing I love about you is that when you, when you break a story or you make a guarantee about something, it actually like happens. Like there's certain people on ESPN that would say, I guarantee Kawhi is going to go to the Lakers. And then when they don't, I knew Kawhi wasn't going to go. But there's like you, for example. You well, that say, was another one. Let me interrupt. That was another one. I said Kawhi was going to the Clippers all the time. There you go. Right, right. right. And you, only, and you not, not only are you right, 
you know, you take the slack when you're not. So look, I want to bring up the Spreewell situation where mm. when you brought that, nobody knew anything about that until you brought that story. And at that time, you took a lot of slack for that. Like they thought you. No, were no, no, I didn't okay. take any slack because because first of all, I broke it the day it happened. Mm. And I broke it that night. So the next morning's paper, it was in there. And by by the time that it got on the wire, because I, our, our, our edition was about nine o'clock at night Eastern time. So then everybody across the country could read it and everybody was reacting to it. You know, the Warriors, the, 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 the Bay Area writers, they had to use everything that I had. They could not get anything else. And I was so proud of that because they didn't come up with anything new, not that next day, not the next week, not ever. I had it cold. And uh, no, I didn't take it. I didn't take any heat for that. The only, you know, uh, I mean, you know, Spreewell, Spreewell wound up, you know, he, 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 he's going to sue me. He's going to do this and that, you know, and, and, and uh, we, we wound up meeting at the union office in New York. So he was suspended. And uh, so I remember Billy Hunter was the executive director and, and, and I came over there to interview him and Billy Hunter did not want me in the room with him. And Freewell said, no, 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 come in the room. So we went in the room together. He didn't strangle me either. And, and uh, <laughs> he denied, he denied, you know, what I had written. And I, and I told him flat out, I said, you know, you know, you can bullshit all these other people. I said, but you know, I know. So let's end it. And he gave me a great interview, not only for the Post, but for the for NBC. And and you know what? We became friends. We became friends. That's you know another guy. He never threatened me, but you know we became friends. I I, I enjoyed interviewing him. I enjoyed being around him. He's certainly a good player. I endorsed the Knicks acquisition of him you know and him and marcus camby took the knicks to the finals that year uh -huh. so anyway so that's that's the Spreewell situation carlissimo on the other hand you know i i had a i had a line in my column at that time about you know Spreewell Spreewell strangling carlissimo who you're rooting for i said it's like rooting for iran against iraq <laughs> so yeah so so um that 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 was that was the key line, but but Carlissimo, you know, he he was an abusive abusive coach in college and and in the pros, and there's no no question. And uh, so he was responsible a lot for not getting strangled, but he you know he he definitely sparked it, he incited him, and he should have known when to back off. But so years later, years later, uh, I he's out of work. And uh, I'm at NBC, and I recommended to my boss that they hire him as a as a, uh, a an in-house commentator, you know, working yeah. with me and uh, I think Kevin Johnson at that time. And they did, and they hired him, and they got him back. That got him back in the league basically, because then he went from there to an assistant's coach. I think he got another head coach after that. But I will say that Colissimo thanked me for that. He knew he knew what I had done. Oh, that's awesome. Well, that's appreciated. So it's interesting how you know the dynamics of the three of us, uh, both of them turned out good. You know, I I, I think I'll just say, <clears throat> I think that uh, there's a respect. There's a respect when you're honest, when you tell the truth, when you call it straight. There's just even from the people, the players that you're talking about or are spilling the beans on. There's a respect because there. First of all, there has to be. You're being honest, um, but you're not afraid. You're like, this is the story I'm going to tell it. I'm going to stand behind it. So I, I just think they have to respect that. They just don't have. Well, you know, I, I, I bring up I bring up Rod Strickland all the time because he, he's one of my favorite guys to this Man, day. He's my to, this, to this day. And, and uh, so I was on his case a lot. He had a lot of things going on, you know, as a player. But but I would I would I would uh, rip him, unravel him, whatever. And then. He he says this. He says, yeah, he said, you, you did. He said, but then the next day you'd be in the locker room. And and uh, I actually saved I saved it because he sent me that uh, on on uh, text by text. I saved it because it meant a lot to me that he knew he understood that I was there. If he had something to say to me, well, here I am, you know. And so he did a lot. Of, he he did a few favors for me regarding charity work and stuff like that. And he he told me that when he got a head college job, that I was going to be 
you know, at the first game. And I'm, I'm looking forward to that for LIU this year. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love Rod. That's yeah, um, I actually saw that um, documentary, The Point God. Um, seeing yeah, all- we could get into that. That was a bunch of shit. You know, I- <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have we only got like fifteen minutes, but no, but I want to hear. I got to hear something. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just Ask saying. Him. But what I, what uh, what I want to say is that you know I do like the fact, um, Peter, the fact when you you have you know the the the. The New York flavor, and, and I know that's like you know it's cliche and everything like that. But what I like the fact is like you're not abrasive, but you're just real. And 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 I was able to respect that because I'm a kid watching NBA on NBC. You know, I'm a kid watching all of that stuff, and I'm I'm watching Jordan break my heart year after year after year. And you're on the sideline, and you're doing the stories, and and the fact that you're doing these stories, but with Real intent and in trying to get the real story, not yeah. trying to. Flex I told you, I told you before we went on, don't kiss my ass, you know. So let's. I'm not trying to kiss your ass. Let me, at the same no, time. let me, let me, let me answer the, the question. Like, uh, all right, okay. So let me tell. Okay, so I love, I love that I have fans like you. I, I really do. I love it. But let me answer. Let me get into the point, guys. Okay. Talk because nobody else is going to get into it. Nobody Talk else understands it. Like I, I'm, I'm trying to read somebody writing something about it that makes any sense, but they don't. Yeah. First of all, point, point guard was a nickname that I gave, that I gave Mark Jackson. So think about it. He was a minister. Oh. Now he's a point guard. So oh, no. they, didn't even, wow. they didn't even understand. Mark Jackson, and I told it to him, he's a co-producer on that, you know, with Kenny Smith. Kenny Smith was not a point guard in New York City. At all. He was a shooting guard. He was a shooting guard. All. So what the hell? You know, we went to the same high school. So what the hell is he doing on there? You know, because <laughs> because he, he, he's got a way of worming his way into everything. But 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 um, you know, point guard. So so they have they have I didn't even watch it. I have friends of mine so I said, you know, who name the guys that were on it? They, you know, they have God Sham God and you know uh, guys that never played in the nba right so what are we talking about point guard they don't have bob Cousy, nope from queens nope. they don't have lenny wilkins from brooklyn exactly. they, they don't have you know so i asked mark i said mark what what was that how could you not have those guys in there tiny archibald got mentioned he didn't i was told he didn't want anything to do with it smart oh. very smart but so, so your three your three guys in the Hall of Fame as point guards from New York are not even in it. Yikes. They did mention they did mention Tiny. I said, Mark, how how is it possible that you would do a, a point guards and not have them? He says, Well, we were just doing the '80s and the '90s. I said, Mark, I mean, go well, and say that. How about yeah. announce that you're not doing point guards in New York City? You're doing point guards from two two decades because. And I said, and, and if that's true. Why isn't Jamal Tinsley in there? You know, why okay. why isn't uh, you know, I mean I, I could go on and on. So that really pissed me off. So I mean, stupid. <laughs> and, and the writers, the writers who cover TV and you know all that, they don't they don't even know what's going on. They they can't even figure it out. So I'm glad you I'm glad you almost asked me about it. I just decided yep. to ask myself the question. That's perfect. <laughs> you, you got it, Josh. Yeah. You got it. <laughs> you got it. I love that answer. I love it. Uh okay. So now I know uh, as a calmness, you, you generally have to remain kind of neutral, just oh. take the story as it comes and report it. But do you have a favorite team? Do you have a favorite team that you covered of all time? Um Yes. Yeah. So, so I, I don't, I, I don't root for anybody really, but I, you know, you brought up Curry. I, I absolutely love, I love watching them play. I'm, I'm not happy about what they did with Mark Jackson and how that owner and, you know, the PR staff got away with, you know, killing them and That's still right. having trouble getting a job. It's, it's all bullshit, but, but whatever. Um, I, I, you know, I, I love the, the, uh, the Celtics when Bird played for them. I just, I, again, I would have paid to, to watch Bird play every game. And, uh, it, you know, I just love that. I love, love being around Julius Irving, you know, with Philly and the Nets and stuff. But I, I didn't root for the teams. I just rooted for players. But a lot of teams had, had a lot of players that I liked. Uh, I haven't like I haven't really rooted rooted for players on the Knicks uh, since uh, Dick McGuire and uh, and Harry Gallatin retired. Ooh. But <laughs> but um, 
No, I'm not. So, you know, I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed, you know, the 99 team. I didn't cover the championship teams except peripherally. I covered the 73 team. I uh, came in there part time, but I was really an ABA writer at that time. And then I picked them up full time in 74. Um, so I, I, I didn't cover their championship. I was not not in the building when Pat, when uh, Willis Reed limped out on the court, unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, I won't, I won't, I won't tell lies and say I was there. So, you know, a lot of players, I, I root for players and I root against players. I, I root against James Harden. You know, I, I, I think he's, he's, whew, I don't know. We could do into stuff on the court, off the court, mm -hmm. man, oh man. Um, well, but not too many like him, not too, not too many. Okay. Um, and then uh, you've dealt with, Pat, we'll be right back. You dealt with, obviously, a lot of coaches in your day. Yeah. Uh, who was one of the most difficult coaches to <laughs> Popovich. get? From? Popovich. Oh, Always Popovich. All right. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he just jumps out. Just jumps out. He he just he's just like a condescending, demeaning, you know, mean person. I mean, he just. You know, he does. Yeah, I know he does nice things if, if, if you're his boy, you know. I mean, I remember when Stan Albeck had a stroke, you know, lives in San Antonio and he would, you know, he'd have tickets for him every game sitting down, you know, where where the players are. He, he got him a championship ring when they won. I mean, he does stuff like that. I get it. But he treated treated the media like shit. Um, and, and, uh, you know, we got into it. We got into it a couple times and uh, I could, can't stand him. I mean, he's. He's everything. He's everything that's wrong with the media and versus versus you know again, trying to interview, do their job. He, he never he never helped the media. Remember you know, all the times on TV where he would try to embarrass somebody who was interviewing him. I mean, the guy, man, oh man. Well, I'll tell you a qu quick story. You know, if we have time. I, yeah, absolutely. Go I, ahead. I I had retired from uh, by popular demand from TV. I was just doing the post, and uh, I went to cover a series between Dallas and San Antonio. And that, that was a great time because I was driving back and forth, you know, and that, that was, that was really cool. And, and so after a game in San Antonio, I believe I sat in on a, it was on TV, it was on NBA TV. And I, I asked him a question and, you know, he, he, he tried to embarrass me and, uh, he said something about, you know, my coaching at the Rucker, you know, like, what is, what does that mean? I said, you know, I won four championships, you know, and uh, I said, but, you know, he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, well, look, I said, if I, if I had Tim Duncan, I'd win championships here too, you know? So, yeah, so we, we got into it. And then, and then uh, I go in the locker room afterward and he comes up to me, goes, oh man, that was fun. I, he enjoys it. No, I, you know, yeah, I said, no. No, that was that wasn't fun. I never spoke to him again. I said, "No, that was that wasn't fun. You're an asshole." You know, <laughs> it's not fun at all. So um, you know, good. Now, they Come just. Uh, I, I'm not sure if you you happen to watch it or even interested, but HBO had a series called Winning Time on the Lakers. Yeah, uh, no interest. Any of no, that at all? None. No interest whatsoever. I I don't. I you know my bottom line is it. I I don't understand why they felt compelled to distort. Uh, exaggerate, fabricate. Why do they feel compelled to do that when I covered those teams? Now, some of the stuff they put out there, I read a lot about it, but some of the stuff they put out there is true, no question. Why would they have to mess with people's reputations like Jerry West? Why, why would they do that? It makes no sense to me because the Lakers at that during those years, there was so much stuff going on, believe me, behind the scenes, so much stuff that, you know, I don't know whether I'm, if, if I ever write my book, will I divulge the stuff that was going on and who was doing it? I probably won't do it because I don't need it. I can do I can do anecdotes without it. But sure. I mean, these fools, these fools doing that to Jerry West and. You know, the stuff, I, I don't know, there were others, like Kareem, I think, was, was all pissed off about it. So, no, I, I have no, no interest at all. Uh, that, and, you know, and it's, it's terrible because people don't know, you know, we've discussed this already. People don't know what's true. They don't. So, if you know, if you followed me and, you, you know, you got to trust me and blah, blah. So now you would know that what I'm putting out is true. These guys are putting out stuff. To fans who have no idea that this is not true. 
It's wrong. Yeah. It's absolutely wrong. Gotcha. So, and no. then you were you were quoted as saying, uh, I believe that ESPN never called you or uh, requested information about the Last Dance either. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. Um, I, you know, I, I I talked to his agent about a woman in Chicago. I, don't know, well, I guess she's his agent, uh, lawyer in New York, in Washington. But I, I asked her why why they wouldn't call because I broke some pretty damn big stories with him. Heck yeah. And um, and she said, well, we just couldn't. There was too much going on. And wouldn't get back. I said, no, no. I said, well, you know, I know the truth. I mean, yep. mm -hmm. first of all, you didn't want me on because you didn't want me saying what I know. <laughs> <laughs> but but let me tell you something. Had he asked me, I wouldn't have done it anyway because I'm not I'm not going to give him my content. Yeah, I'm not going to give you my or I'm not going to say stuff that's you know that you perceive as negative and then you're gonna it's going to hit the floor. Exactly, they're going to. I'm it not going to let you edit me. Mm. So you know, I mean, we had a good conversation, she and I. But but Mike Michael Michael, uh, you know, look, he helped me many times in my career. He really did, and. Uh, but I find fault. I find a lot of fault with with what was going on. I'm, I'm actually starting to read this book. <laughs> I, just, I, I just started reading it, Pippin's book, and and I, I I'm only ten pages in, and he hasn't told a lie yet, and everything he said is absolutely true. So I'm going to look forward to finishing that book. Um, anyway, you know, again, Michael Michael helped me a lot, and he also lied about stuff with me. So. Whatever, yeah. Yeah, you know, I was, I was, <laughs> I actually was going to ask you this before, so I think it's a great segment into it. You, you got the Kirk Gowdy Award in two thousand nine in the Amazement Hall of Fame, and that was the same year that Jordan went in. <laughs> and so, my original question was, how did it feel going in the same time as Jordan? Uh, you know, into the Hall of Fame. Well, I know what he would say. How, how did how the opposite? How do you like going in with me? Because it seemed yeah. it seemed like it seemed like he stole my speech. You know, mine my speech <laughs> was controversial, and then his was controversial the next night. I look, it, it would have it, it 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 is meaningful that I went in with him and, and Stockton and Robinson and and uh, and Jerry Sloan, and you know, it was meaningful. But you know, the Hall of Fame, uh, they do everything wrong to me as far as I'm concerned. They never ever put me next to those people that I could actually have a picture with them. Mm, oh, Not wow. one. So I don't, I don't have anything from there. They gave me a trophy, which uh, I, I, I auctioned off about five years ago. I think wow. I got charity, whatever I, whatever I got, uh, they paid too much for it. Mm. Um, and the reason I say that is, is like, I, I, uh, I found out that I'm not really in the hall of fame. I'm not really. The meet the, the Kurt Gowdy Award is a bogus award. It's just a, it's just another award for the Hall of Fame to make some money on another night, because when Mel Daniels was being inducted into the Hall of Fame, as it turned out, he couldn't make it because his his he was sick and then he and died soon afterward. But he and I were very very tight, and he wanted me to present them. And and the Hall of Fame people said, "No, you can't. You're not in the Hall of Fame." And I said. What are you talking about? I said, no, you know, you're in the Kurt Gowdy. I'm in the media. I said, really? I put my I put my trophy up for auction soon after that. I was like, hey, Rizzo, I'm not in it. Understood. Wow. And I never knew that. So, so yeah. yeah. So Peter, yeah. I was going to ask you because I, I will follow multiple sports, and when I see like the Hall of Fame, it's usually to the pro league of whatever that is, right? So it's in, in, you know you have Canton, you have Springfield. You know, and, and and then you have um you have all these great like um Hall of Fame with their pro sports, but the NBA is I I, I don't want to say convoluted. I, I don't want to say down. that. It just it feels watered down. It's like if you were great internationally, if you did something for the league, or or if you did something internationally, or in, like Olympics, or like it just didn't feel like the Hall of Fame for these. Yeah. Well, you're right. I mean, you're right. My dog is coughing to death. Oh, you're fine. But, but, but um, no, it is watered down. And it, it, because, again, the Springfield Hall of Fame is all about making money. You know, they're going to put in the Nike, the Nike boss. They're going to put in a Nike executive. They're going to put in Dino Raja, for Christ's sake. You know, it's like, uh, I, I, I mean, it's like 
anybody, you know, now they have a new award, you know, they made up an award so that Jim Gray could get an award. Oh my yeah. God. You know, that's, I got if I wasn't, if I wasn't, if I hadn't sold my, my, my plaque or trophy before I would have got rid of it when he got in. You know, and that, this, year, this year they're putting in my old boss from uh, from NBC, Dick Ebersol. For what? For what? What did he do? It's this new award. But I guarantee you that. Well, I can't guarantee it because I don't want to get sued. But I would, I would, uh, I, I, I suspect that Jim Gray and the others that get this award are kicking in money to get it. So. And like the, the Hollywood the Hollywood Hall of Fame. Fame. Yeah. The Hollywood exactly. Hall of Fame. exactly. And he yeah. did pay for that. He got yeah. his he I think he paid fifteen or thirty thousand to get his yeah. Yeah. and then you have to pay a yearly. No, no shame at all. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. Oh my god. Peter, uh, thank you so much. We finish each episode with a short segment we call Money Mike's Out of Bounds. Money Mike is going to share his thoughts or opinion on a topic, and he just wants to know if those thoughts are in bounds or out of bounds. Money Mike, you got the mic. All right. So, hey, Peter, first of all, thank you for coming on. Oh, I've enjoyed welcome. every second of this. And my out of bounds. I, I've all been... off the record, you know. This this show is all No, no, this is no, on the record. I've enjoyed it every second on the record. <laughs> now, 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 you you, yeah. you said you didn't want to compare errors and stuff, but I got to yeah. ask you this question. I apologize. Uh, am I out of bounds? We, we all know that LeBron is going to play this year. He more than likely is going to break Kareem's record. Uh, you know, and be the all time scoring list, right? Um, but am I out of bounds to say because I know Kareem Abdul Jabbar has made only one three point shot in his whole career, and we we know that LeBron has made thousands. Am I out of bounds for saying that that Kareem scoring accomplishment is more valuable than LeBron's? Well, first of all, I don't think it has anything to do with a three-point shot. You know, okay. It, well, it has, you get extra points, so you know. Well, I mean? yeah, but 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 he's a center, you know. So you know, yeah, he, right. he's got a hook shot. So you know, that's <laughs> but why would he go out there and and take that? But no, I think you're looking at it wrong. You should be looking at it from the point where LeBron came from high school and had folks four years. Imagine Kareem was ready to play pro ball coming out of high school. Imagine if he didn't he didn't go to UCLA and win three championships with UCLA, all those points that he would have piled up those years. So, you know, LeBron, LeBron, look, I I I, I for I gather you you know, you know, you disrespect him a little bit, but I, I look, he is he's a great player. Uh to me. Um longevity is 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 much of it, but he's been injured the last two years now. So you kind of you're kind of saying he's going to break Kareem's record. The last time we saw that was Carl Malone. He was going to break it, and then he got hurt. Mm -hmm. Kobe, Kobe was going to break it, then he got hurt. So LeBron has got been hurt twice in the last two years, and and so there's no guarantee. And I don't wish him any bad luck. I mean, he breaks it, he breaks it, but let's let's see what happens. You know, absolutely, Peter. Thank you so much for joining us. Can you please let our listeners and followers know uh, you have a podcast and the best way to keep up to date with what you are going on with right now? Yeah, I I, I do. Uh, I've only done nine podcasts for the Retired Players Association. You can look it up. Uh, it's like Legends Legends of uh, of Basketball, and then you go to Hoop Du Jour or my name. Um, but the nine I've done are, are really, you know, really good ones. You know, Julius, I mentioned, you know, I did Oscar, I did Jerry West, uh, I did George Gervin, McAdoo, you know, mm, a lot of Lakers in there. Yeah. Uh, Dominique Wilkins, uh, Michael Ray Richardson, one is terrific. Oh, I mean, nice. he really is down, you know, lets it all out. I hope I have and Rick Barry. I just did. So I've done nine, you know, I'm working on a couple others that I want to do. I want to do Isaiah. <laughs> Um, I'd like to do Pippin. I'd love to do Pippin. Um, uh, I'd love to do Bob. I want to do Bobby Dandridge. Uh, he, he's got terrific stories. So mostly, uh, except for Richardson, all Hall of Famers, you know. Excellent. Awesome. Peter, thank you so much for joining us again. We're so honored just uh, to have you on and to 
hear your story straight from you and and tell it like it is, uh, like you have done your entire career. Uh, we really appreciate it. We hope we can have you on again someday soon, and we look forward to that day. Thank you so much. Thanks. For yeah, it was good, good talking Thanks. basketball with you. Yeah, you I, if, you, if you ever write a book, man, let oh, me, yeah. I, I'm going to get it. Oh, I'm coming <laughs> there we go. Please consider it. Please consider it. <laughs> I've got a lot written. I just have to have to figure out. You know, it's like it's like the Bob Seger line: "What to leave in, what to leave out." You know, there, yeah. it, there it is. Well, just put it all in there, and and, and we'll read it all. That's what we want to hear. Right, Thank okay. you again. Thank you so much, right. and we'll see you. We'll keep up to date with what you got going on online. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, so you much. very much, Peter. Right. You're welcome. God bless. Thank you. That's it. That's absolutely amazing. That's Wonderful. It, Man, I need another 30 minutes. I know. We could have gone on forever, yeah, but I mean, we promised him an hour. He stuck with us, and we, we held he to did that. It, dude. It's like 1230. Uh, but uh, Peter, yeah, he exactly. He's there. He stayed up till 1230 on uh, East Coast time. Uh, he told it exactly how it is. He told it straight, exactly how we expected Man, it. He hasn't Hall changed a bit. Um, now, I told you, it was, Hall of Fame's wow, dude. Wow. Yeah, what we, right. he, he's not what even you? in it. And yeah. he, he auctioned it off. Like, that's yeah. how much he cares about that. Yeah. Yeah. Before well, we leave, I want to give some shout outs. Uh, shout Please. out to Big Baby Jonathan. Yep, absolutely. Uh, sticking with us, always chiming in. I appreciate hey, you. He's going to be he's, in the He's a our weeks. guest. In yes, a couple we're going to be a Can't Two wait to have you in the show. Uh, P. Johns, um, my, my man, uh, P. Johns, uh, two piece in the pot, bro. You know what I'm talking about. I got my boy, uh, Tony. Tony, hey, man. Hey. South Bay Lakers, Tony. For sure, man. Thank you for listening to us, man. We love doing this show for y'all. So keep chiming in. Keep letting us know, man, because we we appreciate the energy. So I just want to say If you guys have any guest suggestions, let us know. Yeah, put it we'll in the comments. Let it. us know. Uh, we love the hard guests. We love to go after them. We love to get them on the show. So definitely. Uh, we will be back next week. Next week we have oh, uh, tell man, Crystal Hogan. Female referee. She's a female referee. She's the first uh, Division One NCAA referee. Okay. And she also refereed the Drew League. Today. She today. refereed the championship oh, game boy. today. Oh, matter, of fact, boy. matter of fact, it was the first ever all female, female referee. Staff. Referee. Yep. Uh, today. And the they Drew. refereed the championship game. Oh, okay. That's, yeah. that's a, that's, that's so a mile. That's going to be in week. this week. All right. And I'm going to tell you all, man. Ready. You know, we, we've seen her out there. She's all business, so it's gonna be fun. Yeah, it's gonna all be right. great. All right, and then, all right, and then big baby after big that. Big baby, yeah, we got BBJ coming in after that. after that. So stick with us. Be sure to follow us online. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. That's how you're gonna keep up to date with our guests and know what's going on. But we're here every Sunday night, starting at eight thirty Pacific. We got Stat Pat, Money Mike, yeah. Fun Simsta. We'll be back next week. Thank you guys. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, everybody who watched and commented. We'll see ya. Yes, Thank you. Yes, peace. <laughs>